everybody, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Maxwell. Welcome to Seriously Serial. Episode 194. Seriously Serial is made possible by viewers like you. And by Blue Legacy, a volunteer-run nonprofit dedicated to bringing people together. Find out more at... If you eat your cereal dry, then you are a snacker, like my buddy, Bowler. Or if you prefer with milk, then you are a spooner, like my pal, Spoonie here. Every month we post four episodes with a theme, and this month's theme is... Lasting Impressions. Lasting Impressions? What do you mean by that? Well, as a general rule of thumb, like we said last week, this is basically celebrating series or brands that have been around longer than I've been alive. So say 25, 50, even more than 100 years some of these brands have been around for. Can you imagine liking something for more than 100 years? So like liking something your entire life and then some. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, and that all, is a lot of love. Yeah, and all the cereals this month are based around that theme. Cool. And today's cereal is... Oh, oh! Sesame Street cereal. Sesame Street cereal? Hmm. I didn't know they have a cereal. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sesame Cereal. And this week I am joined by my mom, Jennifer. Say hi. Hi, <laughs> hi everybody. So what can you tell us about Sesame Street? Oh my gosh. Well, let's see. Sesame Street uh, first was on the air in 1969. Wow. So that is longer than you or I have been alive. <laughs> so that is a lot of love. That's yeah. a lasting impression for sure. Yeah, 52 years. Yeah. That is a long time for a show to be on. Mm hmm. Do you think Seriously Serial will be running in 52 years? <laughs> I mean, well, I do know we keep getting better, so there's that for us. <laughs> You'll be in your 70s, and I'll be like. 99. <laughs> hey, I keep eating cereal in my 70s. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely watched Sesame Street growing up. Uh, I really loved the songs. I think mm. songs are a great way to teach things. You know, yeah. like you teach counting and multiplication tables, alphabet, you know, like all these different kinds of things. And I think songs are just a great way to deal with especially things that have to be memorized. Mm. Gives them a, a little bit of fun, an element of fun to it. And I just think it's easier to memorize a song than it is just to memorize facts and figures. So that's kind of a cool thing. Oh, yeah. Well, I do remember watching a little bit of Sesame Street when I was younger, but me, I mostly watched uh, Bebop. Or, it's a booba. I'm actually not really sure how it's said. Those, like, like colorful, thing. fuzzy creatures. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the Teletubbies who were colorful but smooth. Yeah, but like yeah, the little fuzzy guys. Yes, yeah. I do yeah. remember those. Beba or booba? Well, I don't know, Max. Is it Jif or Gif? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> so, as you guys may or may not know, I have two moms, and Brienne told me that she actually got a Tickle Me Elmo toy for Christmas the year it came out, and that toy was a pretty big deal. It was, it was a toy that laughed when you tickled it. And Elmo is the uh, is the red guy on the box right here, right? The guy who did like Elmo's world. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Elmo's world. Guy, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, that's Elmo, and the bigger blue monster is Cookie Monster. Ah, yes. I remember it when when I would watch Sesame Street. One of the things that I really liked is the diversity of the human mm. characters. They were different races, they were different abilities, um, men, women, boys, girls, you know, all different kinds of human characters, very, very diverse. When I was growing up in the 70s in Seattle, it was also a very diverse community. And so it was, I really wanted to watch television that looked as diverse as the world around me, and Sesame Street definitely did that, and I really appreciated that. That's nice. That's cool. I always felt like a little bit bad for Big Bird, the, the big yellow bird yeah, character, yeah, yeah. because even though he was much taller than even and larger than even like the adult human characters on the show, he always seemed kind of clueless. Like he didn't really know exactly what was going on. He had to ask a lot of questions and have people explain stuff to him. Mm. And I, I, I thought that was just really interesting. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I think it's good to remember that it's always okay to ask questions and, you know, accept help if you need it. Oh, definitely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you wanted to help Big Bird and yeah. you wanted him to ask for help because you didn't want him to just flounder around and not know what to do and kind of feel like he he didn't have any choices and he wasn't sure. Yeah, so definitely, yes. Originally, Sesame Street was actually going to be called 123 Avenue B because it rhymed and the title made it pretty clear that it was a show about learning. But then the show's producers found out that 123 Avenue B was a real address in New York City. So they changed the name to Sesame Street. But even before Sesame Street first aired in 1969, Cookie Monster was already a star. That furry guy, who would later become famous for his love of cookies, appeared in a commercial in 1966, three years before Sesame Street even began. The commercial wasn't for cookies though, it was for crackers. Okay, so right off the bat, <laughs> I have to point out, though you guys might have guessed it already, because it kept popping open, this cereal box comes with a storybook. Oh, you mean like uh, how Cheerios used to like come with books? I remember we got Click Clack Moo and the Alphabet Tree like that. I do remember that, but actually, look at this. Not only is it built into the back of the box, but it's bilingual. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. No, either have I. Definitely not. What's nice about Sesame Street is that it is about as much about learning as it is about bringing people together. Yeah, I completely agree. Oh, oh yeah, and there's even a little game on the side where it shows the English and Spanish words for something, and then you have to find the serial letters to match. The serial okay. letters? Yeah, I think. Oh, actually, there's all the letters in this serial. It comes from <laughs> in A through Z. And it's cinnamon flavored. Mm. Huh. Oh, oh, so it's like as you're eating, look for the letters yeah. for the Spanish and English words. Not like, see, I'm never really fond, and I think you and or Faith, maybe both of you guys have said this in past episodes, I really don't like it when we're told to play with the cereal. Mm. You know, like to make a little stack of the cereal or take one of the cereal pieces and move it through a maze on the back of the box. That just never impresses me as hygienic, as, yeah. as clean. You know, it's like, well, you know, why are we playing with our food in that way? But if we're just like, we're eating and like, oh, can you find an F or a B or a P or an A or an M? Oh, okay, as I'm eating that, I think I'd be okay with. A serving size of Sesame Street cereal is one cup. And that's about 140 calories or 32 carbohydrates in this case. I was also actually impressed that it has a lot of great vitamins that we all need and 70% iron, and that helps us uh, make really healthy and good red blood cells. Oh, that's cool. Hey, let's give it a try. All right. All right, so I'm a pretty big fan of uh, cinnamon cereal, so I'm excited to try this. They're tiny. They are. They're tiny. <laughs> Oh my goodness! They actually do look like the letters, though. I'm kind of surprised that they got that they were able to be like so accurate. Man. And it has the entire alphabet yeah. in here. Like you guys know how tempted I am to do exactly what I said I don't want to do, you know, and like yeah. lay them out A through Z, but you know we won't do that. And this is our new hourglass. So to taste the cereal and come up with our scores, we have three minutes. And they are, they're really little, you guys. Look how little the little letters are. Oh, that's interesting. They're like Cheerios, but they have like a corn flavor to them, like corn pops almost. Okay, this is not a super sweet cereal. No. First, I'd like to say that. The cinnamon flavor is not as strong as like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah. Try to compare it to things that you guys actually know. Like if you like cinnamon toast in the morning, like Max, that's one of his favorites. This does not taste like cinnamon toast and it doesn't taste like the cereal cinnamon toast crunch. You can see the cinnamon in the cereal. Mm -hmm. um, I actually kind of like that it's not that sweet though. This is like yeah, me good, too. Like, yeah, it's like a kind of, it is like a kind of a coin pops type thing. Yeah. But maybe like a little sweeter, but like actually pretty good. Like it's a more mild cereal, it's nice. Yeah, like the cinnamon is baked into 
a little like like you're saying, Max, like a little corn cereal. <laughs> oh, oh, my beard! Oh no! No! <laughs> oh, that's it. Time to trim your beard. I guess so. <laughs> um, at first when I saw how small these were, I thought, oh, this is not a good snack or cereal. They're so tiny, but actually, it's kind of fun. It's almost like it reminds me of eating um like sunflower seeds, mm. I guess. Not not where you have to take them out of the shell, but like a little tiny. is just excellent. And they don't get soggy milk either. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. They ha- they maintain it. <laughs> oh, they're going everywhere. <laughs> maybe. But uh maybe that's proof that they are a little small for it to be yeah. a snack or cereal. I'd say um, I'd say I would give this a solid you know, I think I might give this a five out of five. Uh, this is really good. I want to give it a five so bad because the flavor is just great and mm-hmm. I'm just not a real fan of super sugary cereals. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I like lots of flavor. This has a lot of flavor, um, cinnamon, but not like it's coated or rolled in cinnamon or something like that. Um, oh no, see, now Max, now you have to trim your beard because now you have a little driplet of milk in your beard. No, that's it. It's a literal milk mustache. (laughs) Well, okay, not literal because this is a milk beard, but. Yeah, there we go. It's almost worse. For the next episode, Maxwell will have a trimmed beard for sure. Um, so even though flavor-wise, I want to give it a five. Oh, we're out of time. I'm going to give it a four. All right. Yeah, just to be totally fair. To be totally fair. Okay. Thanks for spending time with us today. What's your favorite thing about Sesame Street? Write us a message or comment on our blog, and Spoody and Bowler might just write you back. Seriously Serial will be back next Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.